Sheriff Clayton and Director Cortez. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, I'm my name is Caroline Sanders. I am commissioner for District 4. Uh, and we have started to host um, conversations with Commissioner Sanders uh, as a way for me to reach out to my constituents, but also um, Washtenaw County residents at large to get information about all areas in the county that um, affect them. And so uh, two of those areas are our, our community mental health um, and the sheriff's department. More specifically, I invited you on here because I wanted you to be able to share um, accurate and factual information regarding the upcoming renewal of the community mental health and public safety millage. So I'm gonna start with Director Cortez because you cannot lobby for the millage, but you can provide us with information about your department and, and how its operations are affected by the funding for that millage. And then I will go to Sheriff Clayton who can advocate along with me for the millage renewal and still give us additional information about uh, the Sheriff's Department's role um, related to that millage. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, um, Trish, and thank you for joining us. Just tell us a little bit about you because some residents may not know who you are, how long you've been with community mental health, and then you can give us more information. All right, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Commissioner Sanders, for having me um, today um, to discuss this very important issue regarding the uh, mental health and public safety perseverance uh, millage. Um, so yes, I'm, my name is Trish Cortez. I'm the executive director at Washington County Community Mental Health. Um, I have been the director for the last decade here uh, at CMH. However, I've been part of CMH for the last 24 years. Um, this month exactly. Um, so that's a little bit about who I am. Um, so uh, you want me to just dive right into the millage, Commissioner Sanders? Sure. So um, the millage was first voted on, was put on the ballot in 2017. Um, the dollars were then levied in 2018. So then we could then start uh, 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 spending those dollars in 2019. Um, we, you know, what what was a challenge at the very beginning of the millage is that shortly after, you know, doing the RPs and getting things ready to get, you know, stand up and up and running, the global pandemic pandemic happened. So we had a little bit of starts and stops at the very beginning because we had to deal with the with the with the national and and worldwide crisis of a uh, COVID. Um, but um, we are now fully up and running, and we've have a lot of really exciting exciting. Um, uh, things happening. Um, when we first passed the millage, um, we did uh, town halls uh, all across the, the of Washington County um, to you know, to discuss with residents of like what are the most important. Now we've, we that this millage has passed. What are the most important things to do? Um, the number one thing was service expansion, and so mental health service expansion. And for just a little bit of history. Historically, um, for many decades, CMH had a very narrow focus of who we were allowed to serve. Although we have the broadest array of services, it was only uh, able to serve, um, you know, a very small subgroup of, of individuals. And that those requirements were this, that you had to be on Medicaid and you also had to have a level of acuity that was quite high. So we were only able to serve individuals with severe mental illness, not mild to moderate conditions, um, you know, as, as an example. So that really left a lot of people with unmet needs in our community because the wait, they either didn't know how to access other services or uh, the wait lists were too long. Or the other thing to know about CMH is that we have a much wider array of services than what my health insurance actually covers. So while you know, basic insurance covers psychiatry, nursing, and therapy. We do case management. We do all, you know, housing supports. We do all kinds of things at CMH that are very, we're very limited to a small group of people. The millage, what people asked was, we just need access to services, agnostic of insurance, and just let people get served. So 
Um, you know, what we've been able to do is one of the things that we did do right out of the gate is build what is called our CARES team, which is a team that, you know, that that anyone can access, even with mild to moderate conditions and, and the whole array of services. So that so that was one of the initial um, uh, efforts that we did. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and with that, we also rely a lot on our community partners. So we also are helping uh, expand services through kind of other primary care services. For example, we provide psychiatry services at, at Corner Health for, you know, youth and adolescents. We also help uh, provide mental health services and psychiatry through other safety net clinics like Packard Health. Um, so we, you know, we're also using other community partners um, to, you know, to help uh, enhance what they're able to do using our funding. And, and sometimes we actually send our staff. Um, um, so service expansion is a, is, 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 is a really, uh, uh, you know, one of the big um, efforts around the millage. We also do things like, for, for example, provide psychiatry time um, at Ozone. Um, we also help uh, provide um, services in, 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 in helping our schools. So one of the other strategies for mental health is using millage dollars to help bring down additional dollars when, when, you know, when possible. So one great example of that is through the schools, and we use the WISD, the Washtenaw uh, Intermediate School District, um, as kind of the umbrella agencies over all the districts to help funnel some money. So one of the things that we've been able to do with millage dollars is provide the match that the WISD needs to then draw down more dollars from the state to provide mental health services for, for gen ed students, um, which, you know, is huge. Um, so there's no need for an IEP, et cetera, but that we now have social workers throughout the districts who are also helping to then help resolve or at least connect students to care in the in the community. Um, we also uh, one of the uh, the uh, I mean one of the one of the services that I'm super uh, proud about is, that is also through service expansion is our 24/7 mobile crisis team. We the call volume in our efforts to kind of promote um, our phone number. Um, uh, which is five four four thirty fifty, um, is um, that we we our call volume at CMH since the passage of the millage, we used to have between like four thousand calls a month. We are now at about ten thousand calls a month, and that is really we've done a lot to promote ourselves, um, which you know we really didn't do that much of before because we were so restricted in who we can serve. Um, but now we have really done a big media campaign to try to get our number out there um, for those who, who are in need. Our 24 mobile crisis team helps respond with law enforcement. So um, we have our great partner in the, in the sheriff's office, um, but all law enforcement agencies, as well as respond to our schools. Um, but one of the things that we found is that many times social workers in schools would um, you know, would would send families and and their students to the emergency rooms when really, um, you know, the 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 bar to get into an inpatient unit is very 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 high. So the crisis team has been able to not only work with our local hospitals to educate and train school social workers, but also let the the schools know call the crisis team. We can help come up uh, that student, that family with a crisis plan to then, you know, and 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 not even have to send um, that family, the student to the emergency room, which could be pretty traumatizing in and of itself. So 24 hour crisis team has been um, you know, really uh, well utilized um, and continuing to grow. Um, before I go into a couple of the other key areas for the millage, um, I do also want to um, underscore that one of the strategies that we're also doing is if we can find other ways to fund a lot of what I just told you that we're doing, we continue. We don't just rely on the millage. We will we will we will pursue that funding, go after that opportunity, so that we can then um, use you know release some of these these funds um uh for other initiatives in you know in either within cmh um or with our our community partners so 
um, you know, we've been able to actually um, uh, cover some of what I just described to you through um, some other CMH Medicaid opportunities. I won't get bore you with the weeds, but then and we also encourage all of our community partners to always so that we can, you know, continue to expand and make the best use of these dollars. Um, one of the other, um, and then I, I will pause on the criminal justice diversion uh, investments because I, I'll let the sheriff start that, and he and I can, uh, you know, punch a counter punch on on that on that area. Um, youth supports is has also emerged as one of our um, highest priorities. So within service expansion, um, that we you know service expansion for all, we're doing very targeted um, um, efforts around our youth. We've seen a tremendous uh, increase in need in our youth. So I've already mentioned kind of what we're doing with the schools, um, but we are also uh, paying for like our, our partners over at Public Health to do, um, it's the Wish You, Wish you New campaign that is really targeted at youths. Um, and that's, you know, the Wish You New campaign, really that title actually came from focus groups with youth that they really just wish adults or, 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 you know, or, um, and others wish they knew that, um, that, you know, it's okay for them to talk about their mental health issues and who's stigmatizing who really. So it's been pretty fascinating, but that's another targeted effort to, um, you know, to address uh, youths. And there are many um, other initiatives under uh, with that. Um, supportive housing is another key investment area. Um, right, right. As soon as at the millage passed, it's one of the first things we did was do um, a request for proposals for um, for our housing partners to submit proposals around housing. So we are doing a lot of supportive housing um, initiatives with our partners, and really focused a lot on. Um, we've expanded the number of beds for youths through um, ozone. We have also worked with the Delana Shelter and really a very specific uh, initiative there was um, they have now beds for individuals experiencing homelessness that are in, the, are in one of our local hospitals, but are ready for discharge. So we do not have to discharge them to whatever encampment they've been living in or wherever they, they you know, whatever abandoned building they've been living in, et cetera. But they've got you know, these designated beds at, at the shelter so they can like, you know, fully recover and also continue to work on their housing needs. Um, so a lot of supportive uh, housing effort, uh, effort, either through our housing commissions or our, um, our community partners like Avalon, um, MAP, uh, Michigan Ability Partners, et cetera. Um, education and prevention, you know, that has been like, for example, the Wish You New campaign, um, other media campaigns through public health, billboards, signs, et cetera, getting our number out there, um, et cetera. So those are um, the, the key ones that I'll pause on um, uh, and uh, see if there's, you know, if any questions that you have, might have for me, Commissioner Sanders, and I'll pause on the criminal justice diversion investments um, and, you know, and let the sheriff maybe get us started on, on those investments. I think the only question that bubbled up for me was I was not, a, I, I think maybe I assumed like maybe many residents do. So you, this millage allows community mental health to not only work in partnership with the sheriff's department, but you also provide support to other um, police agencies in our county. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, um, you know, one of the the, the traditional um, uh, um, kind of uh, um, partnership with all of the agencies in Washington County is when law enforcement is dispatched to 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 a scene, and if they recognize or even know from the dispatcher that there seems to be a mental health crisis happening then they can, they will call the crisis team and they actually have their own, you know, they can like jump the, you know, jump the line and go straight to a mental health crisis master's level professional. And we will co uh, coordinate a response at that scene and work with all law enforcement agencies. Um, so that's that we, we do that, not just through um, officers actually calling us and at, requesting our presence. Um, but lots of times, you know, just yesterday I had the chief of police of Celine uh, call us about a situation that's going on there and, and how can we help resolve um, that situation. So, yes, we, we respond with all law, law enforcement. Um, and then we have a unique partnership with the sheriff's office in doing some uh, pretty um, 
it was a pretty, you know, fantastic uh, pilots that we're currently doing. Okay. That was my only question for you at this moment. And so now um, we can turn this over to Sheriff Clayton to, to weigh in on the other half, the other services and the dovetail services that occur um, as a result of this millage. Uh, well, good. Whatever this is going to be when somebody watches it, afternoon, morning, evening. Uh, again, my name is Jerry Clayton. I have the honor to serve as the uh, Sheriff of Washington County. Thanks for having us, Commissioner Sanders. Um, so I can take a little bit more liberty, as we've talked about as an elected official, to talk about the millage. And I want to, you know, the uh, Trish did a great job of providing this overview. I want to take a step back a little bit because I think people need to understand a little bit more the, the origins of it, the history of this, because there's so much misinformation, um, some in, some some unintentional, and I think some of it's very been very very intentional. And you know me very well. I'm going to talk direct and say what I believe on this stuff. And I think the misinformation, intentional or otherwise, has been is very dangerous. And I think in Washington County, we've adopted this national approach that the facts don't really matter if I say it enough, people will believe it. So that being said. You know, we started conceiving this stuff. I'll just talk about from my perspective. Back in 2014, there's an article in Ann Arbor Observer, people can see, where I'm talking about this millage three or four years before it comes to fruition. Because, you know, the, the biggest driver of this mental health, public safety, public safety, mental health millage, however you want to frame it, is, is for us on the public safety side, the sustainability of police services contracts throughout Washington County. I won't bore us with all the details, but we knew over a period of time that the current that the approach at the time was not sustainable, that the county was investing upwards of three million dollars to provide the subsidy between the cost and the price for contracting partners throughout Washington County. And this is important because for those that have their own police department, you live in a township that has its own police department, uh, people have this tendency to think crime. Uh, stays within jurisdictional boundaries. Those of us that know that that does not happen. So if you don't invest in this larger overall architecture for public safety, it weakens the entire county, even those institute, even those jurisdictions that have their own police departments. So we knew that the model wasn't sustainable. We talked about a public safety millage, but I also know where I live and work. And even then, although it's, I think it's much more challenging now, but even then I had concerns about whether a public safety millage in and of itself would ever pass in on its own. Um, community mental health was having their own budget issues. We, we've gone through that and it only made sense. And, and, and Sheriff's Office and CMH always had a really strong relationship, but we were a lot more intentional back then to make it even stronger. And there's no argument or denying that many of the, the, the individuals, unfortunately, that a deputy sheriff or a police officer may come in contact with might be one of the same clients that CMH is servicing. And, and even if they're not, they might be a person with a behavioral health disorder. So there was already this intersection of individuals. And it only made sense because in Washington County, we've always talked about collaboration and recognizing that we are more effective when we don't work in silos, than we work together. That the other thing we knew, too, that a mental health millage in Washington County stood a really good chance of passing for all the reasons that we know, the values and everything else. But we also knew a mental health millage would not pass at a mill. It was just too much. But what if we do a public safety mental health millage? We talk about that intersection. We talk about uh, serving community on the front end or upstream, which CMH does a great job of trying to provide services before people get in crisis. But even with their best efforts, because to a lot of times it's a larger societal failure, you're still going to get people in crisis. You're still going to have circumstances where community responders respond. How do we address the entire continuum? So it made sense for us to do that. And quite frankly, at the time, we had a champion, uh, a commissioner was willing to champion that. It was Andy Labar. Uh, and we went out there, we sold it, and that millage passed two to one. And I'll be honest with you. I was hopeful. I think we all were hopeful that it was passed, but we were really concerned about it. We didn't expect it to pass two to one. So we're here. But I want to disabuse of one or two things I've heard that 
People got hoodwinked because we talked about it being a mental health village and not a public safety village. That could not be farthest from the truth. If you look at all the information, the flyers, the handouts, the pamphlets, it said public safety, mental health, or mental health, public safety. It was always uh, advocated in that way. So now we're here. What have we done with it? So what it has done on the public safety side, I'll, I'll say it that way, but it, there's this intersection. It, it has provided structural, stable financing for the county to continue to support this concept of contract policing in Washtenaw County. And Washtenaw is one of the few counties in this state that still do that. A lot of sheriff's office throughout this state don't provide the, the, the contract policing. And what you see then is a peripheration of small police departments that come up throughout the county that quite frankly can't afford to invest in a way that has the right training, hiring the right staff, and, and now you have, if you have 20 different police agencies, you have 20 different ways that that service may, may, be, may be served. And I think we need to be mindful of this. Where you happen to live or the jurisdiction you happen to drive through should not dictate the quality of service that you get. And when you have this multiple police agencies, that's exactly what happens. So this millage has allowed us to continue to provide the service. And you know what else it did? You know this, Commissioner. It freed up $3 million in general fund money for the commissioners to decide to reinvest in other services. So when people say, well, what is the millage doing for me? The millage is giving the commissioners a lot of latitude to invest in other non-public safety, also other non-mental health services that quite frankly are so important in this in, in this county. So I, I don't think we, we, we should lose sight of that. So I'm gonna advocate while I'm talking as well, you know, and I said this in, 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 in Orvin, if we do not pass this, if this millage does not pass, my question is always going to be, how are we going to fill that 17 to $18 million gap that sits in the budget? Not just the county's budget, not just the sheriff's office budget, not just the mental health, a community mental health budget, but the other jurisdictions, because the formula was 38% for mental health, 38% for public safety, 24% for jurisdictions throughout the county that has their own police agency. So not only do we have to fill the gap in the county, you got to fill the gap in all those other jurisdictions that quite frankly have allocated that money as structural dollars that now will be gone. So we're going to see a gap in resources there. So I've got just a few notes. So here's some of the municipalities that get served from the police directly policing. Dexter City, Ann Arbor Township, Dexter Township, Lodi Township, Manchester, Salem Township, Sio Township, Superior, Webster, Ypsilanti Township, York Township. So all those townships throughout the county now have police services because of that millage. If that millage goes away, there's one of three things that's going to happen. The county's going to find four to five million dollars to continue the subsidy. I don't think that's going to happen. Um. The, the jurisdictions themselves will have to form their own police agencies. And quite frankly, it will cost them far more money to stand up their own individual agencies than it will whatever they're paying in taxes to renew the millage. And we have to continue to say this, this is a renewal. It is not a new millage. And the third one is, can you hear me? Okay. The third one is you have to depend on the state police. So the state police only have so many cruisers in, 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 our, in our county. They're not even based in Washington County. They're based in Livingston County. So from an emergency response standpoint, you'll lose that, um, that, that overall service that you're going to get from a county perspective. I think we lost the commissioner, but we'll keep going. Um. The other thing that I really want to stress the investment in the millage is this. Uh, we, I think we lose sight of one of the most fundamental resources that we have is emergency communications. So when you think about 911, 911 is actually to uh, community responders or emergency responders what the central nervous system is to the body. And we know that the central nervous system really serves 
It takes in messages from out the body and then it decides and sends messages back to other parts of the body to respond so the body can actually function. That's exactly what the 911 system is. It takes in calls, it processes those calls, and then it communicates to different community responders and it sends them out in the community to address issues that happen all throughout Washington County, regardless of jurisdictional boundaries. Because right now, the Metropolitan Di Metro Dispatch here for the, not just for the Sheriff's Office, but for the county, serves over 95% of the emergency calls that happen in the entire county. So the millage was invested to build a new um, Metro Dispatch Center. And it was built not just for today, it was built for tomorrow. It is built in a way that now we are ready for expansion over the next 10 years. And the way it was invested was simply this. We bonded for the for, for the millage. We didn't build a new building. Took an existing building, bonded for it. And by the end of this millage, that money will that, that bond will be paid off. So some would say, well, then we don't need to millage because it's all paid off. But there's still operating costs that continue to exist in Metro Dispatch that the millage dollars can be used and leveraged, excuse me, to pay those costs. I want to add a couple more things. Um all the work that we've done around diversion and deflection and reentry. So out of the millions of dollars that's been collected and allocated to the sheriff's office for the from the millage for public safety, we have not hired one additional deputy sheriff. So there's been not one extra police officer hired, but there have been dozens of extra other staff that's been hired, case managers, Reentry workers, community uh, street outreach workers, all of those individuals have been hired. I want to give you just some very specific examples. So to support jail residents, folks that are incarcerated in our jail, to help them reentry enter, we stood up a robust reentry program, mostly funded by the millage. So the millage funds two case managers, two peer support specialists, one reentry coordinator. And it really does support the hundreds of people that come in and out of our jail. And that's been targeted and it's been done based on data. So when CMH and the Sheriff's Office got together and we put a data team together and we integrated our data between CMH and, and in jail, and what we found out is if you had a behavioral health disorder, your average length of, of, of stay in the jail was two times more. The likelihood of you recidivating was three times more. And when we looked at why you recidivated, the biggest driver was a technical violation of you violated probation and it was behavior based. You know, what we did, we took millage dollars, hired two case managers. And when people are on probation that have these issues, we've tied them to those individuals that help them back in community, navigate those challenges. So they're less likely to recidivate and end up back in jail. So that's part of that investment. We've invested in we Live, which is part of that, um, community violence interruption, that we know what's driving a lot of our, our gun violence is retaliation, is youth-based retaliation. And essentially what we're doing is we're engaging those youth that may have gotten injured and counseled them and supported them so they're less likely to retaliate and continue to perpetuate the violence in the community. That has nothing to do with a police officer. It has everything to do with the community. So people will say, well, I don't think that should be in a sheriff's office. I won't disagree with you, but we had been talking about it for years in Washington, North County. But guess what? We don't talk about it. We just do it. So we did it in the sheriff's office because they weren't doing it anywhere else. Oh, and Trish also talked about using millage dollars and leveraging that for other dollars. So we use millage dollars to leverage a million dollar federal grant that's based around reentry. So we leveraged some of those millage dollars and brought more millage dollars in. And we continue to do that. We used, we leveraged millage dollars to get one of the, one of the only community CDI grants. I think it was a million dollar grant from the state in their inaugural um, grant allocation. We were the only criminal justice agency in the state to get those dollars. And actually on the state level, they're looking to see us as the model of how that could be replicated down, down the line. I'll pause there, but I'll just, I want to just speak to one more thing. There was criticism about how some of those millage dollars were spent. They talked about the jail and some other things. 
I just want to, oh, oh, the, the two things. So we talked about the, the um, COVID. So COVID did pause a lot of our programs as well. So when people start talking about, well, you got $6 million of unallocated money. Well, sure we did. Because we had to pause all this through COVID and we're ready to go. So the only logical thing is, why would I just spend the money? We'll pause it and when we're ready. Now we're ready to rock and roll. But here's where we've also had to invest millage dollars. Jail medical contract increased from 2022 to 2023 by $770,000. Then it increased again the next year by $90,000. Food service contract increased by $160,000. Now, these are people in our jail that should be treated humanely with respect and not just providing the minimum, but providing them what they need to navigate the criminal justice system in a way so they can re-enter the community in a better place to not recidivate. That money didn't come from an increase from the county budget. That money came from the millage. So if the if the millage didn't pay for it, then the board would have had to find that money somewhere else to pay for it. Because that wasn't optional. That's mandatory. The last thing I'll say is about patrol rights. It was brought up as a negative thing and a reason why we shouldn't invest in the millage. It's a public safety millage. Now, I don't know where everybody else lives, but I live in the real world. We've had active shooters in Lansing. We've had them in Oakland County. We've had them all throughout this country. And I can guarantee we just had two scares in this county. Those patrol rifles weren't bought on a whim. Those patrol rifles were bought to equip our staff in the event that someone threatens our babies, our loved ones, or anyone in our community, that we have staff that's best positioned to neutralize that person and save people's lives. Now, if that's not the right allocation of, for, for public safety dollars, then uh, don't vote for it. I'll just say it that way. But if you believe that part of our responsibility is for us to keep a well and safe community and you have to invest appropriately and strategically in doing that, then you must invest and vote positively for the millage. And I'll stop there. I appreciate um the depth of that information, um, as I have said many times from the board table, um, I I have a slightly different relationship, I think, with law enforcement because I used to be married to law enforcement. Um, and I know from being on the inside of that, that many people don't understand all costs that are associated with being a law enforcement officer are not covered by your employer. You are, you're given an allowance that is supposed to cover some of your uniform expenses and your, your armory expenses. It doesn't cover it all. And if we want consistency, um, then you, know, you kind of have to lean on the department to make sure that it is across the board the same um, response weaponry. That's what I'll call it, response weaponry. Uh, to show up when we have an emergency. Um, and many people don't understand that, right? And I don't know, I, I am in agreement. I don't know what people think the millage money is supposed to be used for or not used for, but what I've not ever heard is anyone coming to us saying that there's any sort of fiscal malfeasance that's, that someone either on either side of your departments are, are you know pocketing this money. There's never any of that discussion. It's philosophical for the most part. But at the end of the day, um, I have been a resident here in this county for almost 40 years because I grew up in Wayne County and there's a stark difference between the two, but also you get what you pay for. One of the main reasons that I stayed here was because of our public safety and the excellence that I saw. I'm not saying that there's there weren't some things that shouldn't have occurred. There's no one's perfect. No entity is perfect. But when you come here and you see that your tax dollars, you actually see them at work. You don't have to question it, right? That makes a difference. And our, I think in, in my limited slash professional experiences, um, an elected official, 
our residents tell us what they think is important. And public safety is at the top of that list. Um, and you don't hear people on, on a large scale coming and saying, I want less excellence when it comes to public safety. Um, and in terms of community mental health, I'm aging myself by saying, I literally remember what happened when we closed the mental health hospitals. And we literally had people dropped off on the corners with their suitcases and no place to go. No care, no follow-up, just we're closing, figure it out. And I don't think that worked well for our community. So from day one that this millage was um, first brought to our attention, I supported it and told everybody that if you're in your right mind, you will support it as well. Um, because there are things that we can do through ordinances that can reallocate, you know, or make priority for certain things. But it's important that people really understand by getting the factual information from both of your offices, what this really translates into and how it shows up. And we don't talk about how cutting edge this is across the nation and how many entities are now moving towards this exact same model, right? You get what you pay for. And if you are someone that doesn't have the blessing to have um, good health insurance, you need this. You need the support. If I didn't have good health insurance and someone in my family was in need, you're kind of out on a limb without something like this as a safety net. Mm -hmm. And it's it's cheaper to be preventative yep. than it is to wait until a cancer has set in and then try and figure out how, you know, how to cut it out or how to cure it. So I, I'm going to get off of my soapbox. I don't know if there's anything else that you would all like to add. I, um, yeah, Commissioner Sanders, if I can, I want to um, just touch on something that um, Sheriff Clayton um, mentioned. And, you know, folks might think like, you know, the, the policing contracts, they don't sign, you know, their, their existence, you know, so what? I will tell you from the CMH perspective how important it is for those, those policing contracts are for us. And that is because, as you heard Sh uh, Sheriff Clayton uh, say, that it provides consistency in all the different townships that he listed. For us, CMH is, is, is countywide, right? So, to the question of yes, we 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 respond with all law enforcement agencies. The difference for us is is that because under the leadership of Sheriff Clayton, because he has always always understood the importance of mental health and behavioral health crises and how that impacts the criminal justice system, how people are in a system that they shouldn't be in if we would have addressed their behavioral health issues, because he has done so much training with all of the deputies. Every time my crisis team has to go and go to you know co co correspond, they hope it's with the sheriff with the sheriff deputy because we know that those sheriff deputies have been trained, and that they have the the culture and the values of the Washington County Sheriff's Office. That is not to say that you know that other P, uh, police departments don't also value that, but it's been consistent always for years now. It is it has taken hold in the sheriff's office as part of their culture. And my and my crisis team know it exactly when they get on scene and they know exactly how to partner. And so for us, those police uh, contracts um, are really important to, to the work of CMH. So I just want to make sure that I emphasize that. And there's the one other last thing that um, on that same point, um, you know, one of the incredible pilots that we're doing with the sheriff's office is actually doing co-response, like not coordinated, but co-response. And through the millage, we are paying for a master's level social worker who has been trained to actually drive a deputy's car if need be, and, and other things with a sheriff deputy that absolutely is just unbelievably skilled at de-escalation, 
has really invested and in, 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 like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like their jam is they, this is what they want to do. Just like on the social work side, not everybody wants to be a crisis worker. Maybe they just want to be a therapist, but then I'm actually getting ac mental health professionals that want to do this crisis work. And now they actually drive together and it is unbelievable the, the outcomes that we've gotten. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my vision, um, uh, you know, that, that we've always talked about with, the, with Sheriff Clayton is that is the mental health response. And, and do less of this, we'll meet you at the scene because for right. us, it's a world of a dice of who, who that, what officer is going to show up with us and have it be consistently professionally trained people that are, you know, on the road to go do this. So, you know, that and um, I think one of the other unbelievable efforts that we've done with the sheriff's office is we have mental health professionals that are actually part of the crisis negotiation SWAT team. And that has had unbelievable um, uh, outcomes as, and benefits as well. So, um, you know, really can't speak enough about how important, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it is to have, like you were saying, uh, Commissioner Sanders, like you, you, you pay for, you know, what you get. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it's, I, I can't speak enough for my team and for what we do, how important it is to have effective trained law enforcement agencies. And the, I'm going to say unintentional, although I think you, the two of you are smart enough that it might have been even been part of the strategy, but this is unintentional cross professional development training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because your officers are learning from the master's level social workers and vice versa. They live in this community. They have family, friends, church folks that they interact with, and now they are being exposed to a, a whole nother level of professional um, experience that can do nothing but sharpen their skills and their, and their individual roles. And I also want to just address for a moment as, you know, I'm, I'm a former UAW member, spent 17 years, very active as an elected and an appointed officer to say Washington County is a labor friendly county. Yeah. And I don't know what people think they get. Every one of these officers is a union officer. Yeah. And that means that we are paying them, maybe not what they really are worth, but we are trying to at least show that their choice, their chosen profession, which is to put their life on the line every day, every day, on duty and off duty, that we should be paying for that. So when people talk about the millage in ways that they need to understand you cannot reduce, unless you're doing cuts, the salaries for these staff are going to increase. That is the majority of the increase. It is not service delivery. It is the human resources cost. And so when people complain about that, I have to remind them, you do understand that these are bargained for employees. Oh, that have the right for a cost of living increase that I don't, I, I, so like I said, as the ex-wife of a former police officer, people don't understand that we don't necessarily pay them what is valuable when it comes to life insurance coverage for their life that they put on the line every day. You know, mm -hmm. that, that when there is some sort of tragedy, why do they think that there is a need to have sort of a uh, an agency or support for the family that they leave behind, protecting us. So I, I try not to get offended, but I do get offended. Well, I'm so glad you brought this up because sometimes I, I wonder where I'm at because I hear people talk about the value of staff and labor. I'm like, well, what happened? All of those sheriff's office employees, just like the CMH employees are county employees, most of them, belong to a labor union. Absolutely. And, you know, and our folks, the facts are what they are, aren't paid at the level um, that most of the other people in the county are. They come and work for us because they like what we do. They believe in what we do. So I, I do appreciate that. And to Director Cortez's point, 
co-response, we're extremely proud of that. We think it will continue to evolve to a model. Law enforcement assisted diversion and deflection, which is part of our partnership with the prosecutor's office and the public defender and CMH. Those are that's that's millage funded, not only in the people, but everything that goes into support that. Uh, community corrections. I just everybody just needs to understand. We have one of the smallest jails per capita in the state, 400 beds for 375,000. As and let's keep it real, as a black man in this country, I'm not advocating for more beds because I know it'd be more people look like me in them. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have the smallest jail in the state per capita and not invest enough dollars to manage community corrections and alternatives to incarceration. So when people say, well, why are we paying more money for community corrections? Because that bill has gone from $40,000 a month to $90,000 a month because we are diverting more people from jail into community, which is exactly what everybody says they want, right. but you got to pay for it. And, and, and I'll end with this. If we double the size of the jail, it would still be smaller than what you would expect on an average national basis, right? Forget about the 200 to $250 million that it would cost to build that. Think about the fact that then you have at least $12 million annually, an increase in corrections cost mm -hmm. versus maybe investing another three quarters of a million dollars to a million in community corrections so you can do it the right way. Mm -hmm. So I hear these sound bites. I hear these little things that people say. And what it says to me first is people are driven by some ideological, I, I, you know, anti whatever. And the other thing is people don't understand the business and it is a business. It's a business. And the product is service to people. That's our product. And to do it in a way that I always thought we valued in Washington County. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I question more and more every day when I hear all of this rhetoric and in mm -hmm. Washington County, we were way ahead. Everybody talked about reforms. I had to laugh a little bit post-George. They talked about reforms. We were doing all this stuff 10 years ago. Not just Sheriff's Office. Right. Sheriff's Office CMH. And you don't have to take our word for it. Go around the state. The relationship that we have both outside, they provide our jail services inside, they do an excellent job, is the envy of CMH and Sheriff's Office throughout this state. You talked about that millage being the model. I have the privilege of going all over the country looking, and that's exactly what people are starting to do now. How do we look and integrate those things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in Washington County, I think we take things for granted. Mm -hmm. And we ignore what we have in front of them. What we've always said we wanted, you actually have in Washington County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about time people start to appreciate it and continue to commit to invest in it to keep getting the outcomes that we said. Not perfect outcomes. We still got a ways to go. Mm -hmm but we are moving in the right direction and the people of Washington County benefit from that. Mm -hmm. They absolutely do. And um, I want to debunk one thing and that's, you know, rhetoric that has surrounded the um, fund balance. And I'm going to, I'm going to steal from my um, fellow commissioner, commissioner light and say, it is not a F U N balance. It's an F U N D balance. And the fund balance is something that every one of our millages in this county has, and it is necessary to have, because if the millages are not renewed, the fund balance allows for the continuation of services through the end of that millage, so that we are literally not laying off scores of employees that would then throw us into a tailspin related to the services that are connected with those jobs. And so I need to just, I just needed to say that because I'm sick of people talking about the fund balance, like somebody's going out and going on a boondoggle. This is money that sits there. Nobody's tapping into that. It's emergency money. Well, That's it's, what also, it is. it's also the unallocated money of the stuff that you've already said you're going to do. It's programmatic. And, and listen, I don't need an MBA. You don't even need a BBA to understand the basics of how you run a business. You just have to have a family and mm -hmm. understand if all if 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 I am spending 
everything I get every week and I have no savings, nothing, I am putting my family in dire straits. Why is public, and most of us that understand this stuff now know that you have to take a private sector, at least from a financing perspective, mm -hmm. approach to public sector. Just because it's public, matter of fact, I will argue we have to be even more judicious and thoughtful about taxpayer dollars than one in the, in the private sector. So I, I'll be honest with you, I was shocked when I heard that that was going to be a talking point because I always thought, wait a minute, we balance the budget every year. CMH does a great job with their budget. I thought that was something to be celebrated, not vilified. It, it's just amazing to me. It is. And, and on your subject of family, we often don't think about the family of the responders. We, we, and rightfully so, we put the residents first, right? The responders have chosen their professions. They know what they're getting themselves into. But that does not negate the fact that we should be concerned about the safety and welfare and that, that mental health is the welfare part of our residents and our first responders. As, as the trainer for my ex-husband used to say, your job at the end of the day, and I'm going to be specific because I like to give people their flowers, but, but retired Sergeant Foley from Ypsilanti Police Department trained my ex-husband that his primary job is to go home to his family at night. And so this millage makes sure that not only are our residents put foremost in their safety and well-being, but also that our officers and our social workers who are the first responders and our EMS, anybody that, that runs towards the fire when everybody else is running away from the fire, is, is taken care of in the best way that we can. Um, and so that is always left off of the conversation. And it shouldn't be because I'm proud to live in a county where I believe, we believe everybody should be taken care of. So I'm going to let you all take the last three minutes to say anything else that you might think you want to add. I, I, you know, I'm a hugger, so I'm hugging you virtually <laughs> and thanking you very much for taking time out of your busy days to come and share information with my constituents and, you know, the county residents at large, because anybody can listen to um, these pre-recorded um, informational conversations. So I'll let you all close. Well, I uh, just uh, end by saying you know, thank you again, Commissioner, uh, for inviting us on this very, very important topic. Um, I do also want to, um, I believe that you will be sending out um, links uh, to a lot of information around the millage. There is a frequently asked questions. You can uh, look at it by uh, investment area uh, if you'd like, and I also would love for folks to take a look at our uh, impact report from this last year. It's got lots of information that would be impossible for me to um, cover here. You also go to our CMH website. We have an entire millage page that has articles, uh, you know, I mean, all, all the impact reports, et cetera. So there's a lot of information out there. Um, so I just want to uh, thank you, Commissioner Sanders, and also thank my, uh, my good colleague and friend, uh, Sheriff Clayton. Thank you. Uh, I think Director Cortez nailed it, right? First off, thank you, Commissioner Sanders, for, you know, what most I appreciate about you, we don't have to agree on everything. We do agree on just being open and engaged with folks and telling it like it is. And I've always appreciated that about you. So this is just another example of that. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to share. Uh, my colleague covered all the links. Uh, there's some Sheriff's Office specific information. If you come to our website, we have a millage page. And all I would ask is for folks to really be seekers of the truth by being finders of the facts. And that would should make their decisions around the vote for this millage, very, very easy. And I, I just wanna thank you both. Um, I, I tell you this, Sheriff Clayton, every time I talk to you, I'm literally in tears at the fact that you are leaving us. Um, but I, I think I've attached my ankle to your ankle, so <laughs> you're just gonna be dragging me everywhere. <laughs> but I wanna thank you you know, for your service. Um, that is, it seems to be underrated and it should not be. 
um, because it's been excellent service. Um, and I just appreciate all that you have brought to the county uh, that is cutting edge, whether or not it's the texting system that gives our, all of our residents on-time information or the various programs uh, that you've enacted while you've been in office. I so appreciate you. And um, I'm prayerful that we will continue uh, that foundation and build on it. So thank you both very mm -hmm. much. If there's anything that I can do for you, please reach out to me. And uh, I hope that this will be um, as enlightening to uh, my residents as it has been to me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take care.